Welcome to the Pat Cloned Creating a Video Game Series. This is the fifth video in the series. If you missed the first four videos, check out the YouTube notes at the bottom. You should be able to catch up quickly. To recap, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create a Pat Clone game using the CBM Program Studio, a cross compiler that allows you to use your modern PC to write program code and execute it on the Vice 64 emulator. This series is mostly geared toward those that might be interested in programming in assembly language especially on the Commodore 64. For the first time in this series, I am proud to say that this program is finally coming together and is actually starting to look like a real game. A real pack clone game, that is. Even though I've come a long way with the program, there is still a long way to go. The program code I am demonstrating today is what I would call unoptimized. In the last video, I implemented the scoring system, demoed all four ghosts running around on the screen, and showed the level ramp ups. In today's video, I will only show the code differences between where I left off in the last video until where I am now. I have three demos planned to show you and will demonstrate the current game execution. Okay, in this demo, I wanted to talk about program interrupts. And for that, I'm going to bring in a demo program that I have here. I don't remember where I've downloaded this from, but I got it somewhere um, probably pretty easy to find on the internet. The concept of an interrupt essentially is to interrupt program execution, do something related to your program, and then resume program execution. And the beautiful thing about it is that it happens automatically, uh, and you don't have to worry about it. It just happens in the background, like a, like a background process. In order to set up an interrupt, what you need to do here is just do these four or five lines of code here. Uh, SEI to disable the interrupts, load the low byte of your target program, store it in 788, load the high byte, store it in 789, re-enable your interrupts, and then return back to the caller. And so what that'll do is tells the interrupt tells the computer to, to execute the code at this address in the background as a background process. So all we have to do is put something here, which I don't have anything here yet. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna have it change the background color just automatically. I'm just gonna have it increment 53280 and just have it change the color rapidly. And then you have to jump back to EA31 in order to resume program, normal program function. So whatever code you put in between here and here is what gets um, executed during the interrupt. So let's see what this does. So that runs, I don't have an auto call yet, so I'm gonna execute it at 4096. And you see, I can still do other things. I could, I could write another program, I could read a book, I could do whatever. But it's still executing that code in the background to change the um, border color. If we wanted to, we could make that the foreground color. We could do lots of things with this. My intention with the interrupt is to use it for the pack chomping motion, the wacka wacka motion where he moves his mouth and also to use it during the flashing of the ghosts when when you have blue time and when the blue times almost ran out I want to change the colors of the ghosts and I, I thought I would use the program interrupt to do that so that's the general concept of what a interrupt is and all I have to do is flesh it out from here to make it work in the pack clone program Okay, in this demo, I'm going to demonstrate how I created the sprites for the Pat Clone game and how to bring the sprites to life utilizing the previous demo that I just showed you, uh, the pro program interrupts. So first, let's bring in the sprites. I have a sprite file that I've already created. And let's go into that. Okay, you see here, 
This is the sprite editor. You can get to it by going up here to tools and clicking on sprite editor and you can start from scratch. You can go file, import, bring it in. But I already have it here so I'm just going to double click it and you can see right here I have 20 sprites and a sprite is, is what is it, um, 3 bytes by 3 bytes, 24 by 24. And let me cycle through them. You can see that's for the animation purposes, up, down, left, right. Then I have my ghosts. This is what I came up for my ghosts. And I, I did the eyes pointing up for when they move up, pointing down for when they move down. This is my left moving ghost, the right moving ghost. Uh, I might change the eyeballs a little, but I, I thought they should have a frown on them. So this is my left moving ghost, right moving, sorry, eyeballs. Eyeballs, I believe, up, eyeballs down. So that's all 20 of my ghosts. This is the sprite editor, and there's a lot you can do here with it. Uh, one of the things you can do is sh have an animation go so you can see what it'll look like. You could have it say, oh, I want to go between one sprite 1 and sprite 3, just to see what that motion would look like, which is really a nice feature. You can copy a sprite, paste it to a new one, you can shift see what happens when you hit shift up left you know if you don't like where it's at you can shift right you can flip them up left up down so that that pretty much in a nutshell is the sprite editor now the the final part of once you're satisfied with the way the sprites are laid out what i prefer to do is to go in here select export to preview and then under the sprite data generation screen generate data using three values per line pad I have pad data to 64 bytes checked I believe I left everything else defaulted only generate included sprites hit OK that brings it into a little clipboard or a little editor that you can copy to the clipboard and then from there I'm not gonna save but from there you just paste it into the program and I've already done that I'm gonna bring in my demo you interrupt with the sprite so what I did was I took the previous code on the sprite the uh, interrupt code and I fleshed it out just a little bit I made the interrupt actually do something so let me show this to you before I go into the program code so to execute the program sys4096 now that displays all of the sprites now the the interrupt code that I fleshed out, I can demonstrate that by poking a value into memory. If I want the pack clone to actually chomp up and down and have some animation, I gotta turn on this flag. And you can see on uh, this Pac, this uh, sprite here, Pac-Man has an eyeball. I have later. I have removed those. I have removed uh, that out to make it more like Pac-Man. He he doesn't really have eyes in Pac-Man. So if I hit poke it, comma zero, turns it off, and then the next byte, if I turn this flag on, the the ghost will flash. Now it's I modified the flashing code a little bit since this demo because they flash way too fast. So I slowed it down a little bit and when you see the program running.
Okay, I'm going to explain a few things about sprites. A little that I know that I've learned in the last couple of weeks. The address D015 controls which sprites are on or off and you can control that by these bit values here. So if I were to make that last bit a zero, that would turn off sprite one and leave all the other sprites turned on, for example. So you can play with this value to turn off or on sprites. The value D000 controls the X position of a sprite and D001 controls the Y position of sprite 1 and then D002 is sprite 2, D004 is sprite 3, etc. I believe there's only 7 sprites on the Commodore 64. And then to change the color of the sprites, D027, and you load a color value and store it, and that will change the color of the sprite. So I'm going to demonstrate that now. Okay, so let's execute the program. And there you have the sprites. And so say we wanted to change the color of the pack clone, we will poke D027, which is 53287, and then comma, a color value. I'm going to start with 1. And it changes to white. If we go to 2, it changes to red, and so on. So then if I wanted to move pack clone, that's D000, which is 53248, and then a number, like 100. I want to move it in. And if we wanted to move the, the Y value, which is D001, 53249, and that's how you move Sprite 1. Now, if we wanted to turn off all of the sprites except for pack clone, that's the value at D015, which is 53269. And turning them off is, <clears throat> excuse me, turning them off is all bits except for the rightmost bit is, is the number one. And so that turns off all those sprites. If you wanted to turn them back on, you go with 255. That puts all bits a 1. Now, the other thing to explain about when uh, going back to the moving the X value, if I were to go to 255 and move him all the way to the right, what if you wanted to go to 256? And right now, you know, in, in, on, the, on the 8 bit computer, you can only go up to 255. And so you get an illegal quantity. So, what the um, designers did on the Commodore was they came up with a, a value on D010 where you have to set the bit, you have to set the high, or, or set the bit you have to set the bit to a 1. So D010 is 53264. If you set the bit to a 1, so 0000, the rightmost bit, which is the rightmost bit is pack clone. If you turn that on, if you turn that on, then it adds 255 to the value that you had in 53248. So let's re reduce this down to like 25. And now if we make this zero, that subtracts 255. And so we'll put us back at just value 25. So I'm all the way to the far left there. So uh, recapping again, adding, changing this bit to a one, adds 255 to it. Changing it to a zero, subtracts 255. 
if we were to make this 50, and then if we were, if we were to make this bit a one, sets it to 305. I found this website by putting up in the search bar Commodore 64 Sprite, and I have here past 255, but really just Commodore 64 Sprite. And this website really taught me everything I needed to know about sprites. It had all the information, and it laid it out. If you really fall, if you read this, and if you try to understand this, it really does a good job of of explaining how the sprites work on the Commodore 64. And it does a better job of how of, that I can do on on this video given the time constraints. But this is where I learned all about sprites in the last couple of weeks and I will put a link to it in the notes and at the bottom of the video. This is essentially is saying 255 stored at D015 turn all the sprites on. Tell the Commodore 64 where the sprites are in memory that's what this is, or at least sprite 2 is in memory, sprite 3, sprite 4, sprite 5 give it an X position, uh, give it the X and Y positions. And so I'm just initializing the X and Y positions, the colors. And then I had a, I called it gobble on. So when the, when the pack clone is chomping, gobble on is one. When he's not chomping, it's zero. I have a variable here, flash on. When the, when the sprites are, when the ghosts are flashing, that's set to one. And here's the interrupt code. I have a counter, an interrupt counter, so every fourth iteration, do something. Uh, if it's not four, then do the flash, check to see if it's a flash. So on the flash, it just does it every time. It does it, it increments it, and then checks it if it's a one or two or three, and then ch and changes the color, basically, every single time. So flash one color, go to the next color, go to the next color, and then set it back to zero and, and set the counter back to zero and start over. So if I increased this value here to 100, it would make Pat Clone chomp really slowly, you know, so that's what this is doing. It's, it's kind of like a delay. Let's demonstrate that. So let's make it 50, for example, and run it. Turn on the well. First, I got to run the program, and then turn on the gobble 4103. And you see <laughs> that made it really slow. But you can see how it, what it's doing in, in fast motion. It does it really rapidly most of the time. And that's just controlled right here. There's no speed setting. It's just a counter. So the lower I make that, the faster he chomps. Same thing with the flash. The flash is a little, little bit different. I intend I, I've already modified this code so it only flashes between blue and white, and it does so fairly slowly, but not too slow. So that's that's the sprite demo in a nutshell. I hope you enjoyed it. Okay, for the final demo, I wanted to go into how to bring the input from the joystick as opposed to the keyboard, which I covered in a previous video. So to do that, I'm gonna bring in a joystick demo that I have created and go over that really quick. It's a short one, because doing the input from the joysticks is very simple. What I discovered is that if I load the value that's contained in 56320 which is port 2 on the Commodore 64 I believe is port 2 and then just store it on the screen I can get all my values and then just jump it in a loop and in my example I have a joystick set up and let me run this F5 So I'm going to push up, down, left, 
right, fire button, diagonal, diagonal up to the left, diagonal up to the right, bottom left, bottom right. So you can see this controls the, it doesn't control, but it, it pulls the joystick port for the values so that I could control the game using the joystick. Now I haven't yet implemented this yet in the in the pack clone and I haven't decided whether or not I'm going to use the joystick or the keyboard or both. Um, I'm not sure how I'm going to control the game yet but that's one of the things I get to ponder as the game's developer. Okay it looks like we left off with pack 13 on the last video. So I'm going to bring in the latest version. I'm going to skip up to version 17. And I didn't really comment it that well after the after program 13. So I'm going to use the diff checker so we can kind of go over the differences here really quick. I don't want to spend too much time on the differences this time. And you can see it says 500 removals, uh, 2,104 additions. Um, just looking over it, I did move around some variables, so there's going to be some differences. I had to add a few extra variables to control the sprites, to add the sprites into the game. So you're going to see some differences here in the variables. A lot of it, you know, remains the same, but I had to make changes in various areas to include the sprites. And I still haven't, even though the game essentially originally was written for in text mode, I still haven't stripped out all the, the text elements that are in it, like to move around the sprites with text characters, and to move around the ghosts with text characters as opposed to sprites. So everything here on the right that's green is stuff that I had added in. So let's kind of look at it from that point of view. You have green, reds, kind of the removals. A lot of green, right? <laughs> I don't want to spend uh, too much time. I had to create a, a, a move sprite routine that will move the sprites up, down, left, and right. And I had to have a way of moving the sprites at different speeds so that some of the sprites are slower, some are faster. So bottom line, you can see there's a lot of green. I had all the sprite data. I had to add a lot and take a lot of changes. So now let's demonstrate the program running. Hopefully it will run when I push F5. Let's see. So here we are, still don't have any sound, but now the sprites move around. I have Pat Clone moving around. I don't have deaths turned on. I don't have a death animation yet. But you can see how it's slightly faster than the sprites. If you look closely at the sprites, you can you can see that they're that the ghosts, that they their eyes change when they go up down. The sprites are moving depending upon what direction they're going in, it's a different sprite. So it makes them look like they're traveling in that direction. And then if I eat a Energizer and go after one, if I can catch one, their eyeballs move at a high rate, higher rate of speed and they go back to the ghost cage. And then you see the flashing over there on the right. And then I designed it so that, the, that each sprite could have a different duration of blue time and a different duration of flashing time. Oops. And then when the blue time ends and the flashing ends, the ghosts go back to their normal colors. So this did take quite a bit of time. You can see my debug code at the very top line, all those characters that are randomly changing. That was me trying to iron out problems. There are still some 
quirky bugs in the code, but it is coming together quite nicely. It's it's a, it's a neat little project. It's been fun to work on. Um, if I was to continue to finish the game, it's going to take a lot more time. <laughs> so I do have to keep uh, first things first, as the No Swear Gamer puts it. And so I might. It's probably going to be a while before I finish this project. Let's eat some more dots. Oh, and then the other thing on the map is just <laughs> on this particular. It's poor. It's a poorly designed map. I, I'll, I'll admit that. It's just way too many dots. There's 400 and uh, 420 something dots, something like that. And so I did put a cheat thing on here. If I push a button, it will elevate me to the next level. And I have different speed depending upon which values I have in my uh, variables at the top of the program. So on level 2 here, pack, pack clone is kind of slow. I also changed the blue time when you advance through the levels. And the suckers, they move away from you now. <laughs> they move away. I have them designed so they, they, they move away from you. They try to evade you from being eaten. And when you don't have blue time, they, they move towards you. So it can be tricky to catch them sometimes. You have to, especially if you're slower than them, you have to kind of out with them. You have to corner them and try to guess where they're going and get there before them. <laughs> so that's the game. That's what I that's where I'm at so far. I have to enable uh, death mode. There's a lot that's left to be done. I would have to create a title screen. Uh, you know, just little things like that. Polish it off, fix the little quirky things like like the uh, the map elements right here. They sh you know, the colors and just little things like that and pretty much the game engine is all done and all I have to do is sharpen the sword so to speak to finish off the project. It's been fun and I hope you've enjoyed watching. <laughs>